Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and in this tutorial I will show you how I am doing lighting for games on Oculus Quest. Specifically how I lit this scene that you can see behind me, I'm not sure why I showed it in front of me, nevertheless you can see it behind me and uh, I'm gonna stop wasting your time and let's get directly to it. The scene I will be demonstrating all of this is from my VR fitness game, so if you are interested in that, you've got the link in the description, so feel free to check that out. I'm gonna show you a few things that I have here, and then I will explain how it works and how you can do that for your project. I will also upload version of these materials on GitHub, so you can use them for whatever you want. Let's get one thing out of the way, because I can bet that you are gonna ask me in the comments. Yes, I am using Unreal Engine 4, and at this point, early 2023, I would not recommend using Unreal Engine 4 for Oculus Quest or any mobile development. Reasoning is pretty simple. Nothing that Unreal Engine 5 is promising you currently works on Oculus Quest or mobile renderer. None of the cool features. So if you are already working on a project, I would not recommend switching to Unreal Engine 5. I would still stay with Unreal Engine 4 and that's what I am doing with my game. Nevertheless, the thing I'm showing you are completely version agnostic. So if you insist on making it in Unreal Engine 5, it will work just the same way. As you can see, most of the scene is pretty dark and that's mostly so you can see big difference between darker and lighter areas. So uh, also be aware that the things in the editor will look darker than they will in the engine. So the moment you put the headset on everything will be like 0.2 brighter. As you can see from this rotating garden it has a green green line that's shining from the, on the walls around it. Then we have this little captivated robot who is levitating around and has this red light shining directly from him. If I rotate it you can see that the light is rotating with him and also when he, rot when he levitates himself he is also moving the light. As you can see if I move him towards the towards the tree, we are gonna shine at the tree. Then we have here another directional light from here to lighting this scene where the player spawns. And also a subtle detail is that a lot of these smaller lights are also blinking. They blink very lightly, so you can't really tell, but it really does add a bunch of a bunch of a realistic feeling to it. Very important is that all of these objects have one master material. So if we look at it, we have here Space Dog Master, which is child material of uh, this huge unlit master hub which is a material that's responsible for all of these lay light effects because I'm actually not using here any light. If you can, you can, you can see that if I switch on unlit, everything stays exactly the same. So the first process in your workflow is to make one master material that all the other objects will set. Then you can make from it a child materials or material instances as it's the proper name. And in that you can have some parameters that you change different textures they should use, which kind of light that should be inflected on it and what's the overall temperature. I call this a parameter temperature and that's basically how light is the overall scene. Very useful for adjusting or working with it in the editor. Now let's look at the start of the evening and that's our light materials. The important thing is that everything is unlit. As you can see, the whole material is unlit, which makes it much cheaper and very beneficial to use on Oculus Quest. The overall instruction count in Vertex Shader is just 74 and 151 in Pixel Shader. Let's start with something simpler and that's our point light. What we basically have here are two material parameters that you set up with material collection that are responsible for the location of the light, basically where that light is in the 3D space and then how big is the radius of it. Then we do some simple math on that where we basically take absolute world position and subtract it from our light location which we normalize. Normalizing basically makes sure that we can easily work with these materials and dot product multiplies these two values. Then we reverse it, saturate and multiply with our location multiplied by the radius. And this will basically give us a result between the areas that should be lit and shouldn't be lit with this point light. Then we take that information of which part and multiply it by a color, which will set up which kind of color the light should be. Later we put it all together, add it with other lights, which we will get into in a bit, and use it as our alpha, which I will get into a little bit later as well. When we have all these parameters for point light, let's see how we can actually use it in a 3D space. I have here an invisible object that responsible, that's responsible for that. It's a simple blueprint called light, that, well, I called it light manager. But it basically just takes a point light arrow location and if you look at what it does, it just simply sets a color of an arrow because it's cooler when it sets it. And I set up a scalar parameter value in a material collection as a side light radius and side light color. 
which are the exact same parameters that we are setting here. I have to manage it with material collection, so it sets it for all the objects at the same time. I am not setting here a radius, I think, because it's just for this scene and I don't need to have it adjustable. But I could as well just turn that variable into a parameter as well and just adjust it here. So I can simply now take my light manager, find here my point light, and as you can see it's here because my green light is shining from here. If I changed the uh, public variable that I set up here for the point light into, let's say, blue, it's gonna color everything to blue. Quite romantic. And again, if and in the same way, if I move the arrow, it's gonna move the arrow. Cool thing about it is that it does not matter whether the game already started or not. Well, it matters here because I am doing the calculation on the on the event begin play, so I can't really move it move it during the real time, but for example for the droid, and I am updating the position of the arrow on tick and setting the parameter, I can move it in the real time and as you can see the light is moving with it. When it comes to performance impact it's very minimal, so you can quite easily use it with moving lights, for example for something like a torch light or similar effect. Now we can start with a spotlight, which is a little bit more complicated. As always we start just with a spotlight location, because we, not, we need to know where is the start of the light. Then we distance it from the absolute world position in the exact same way we would do with our, with our previous single light. Then this time we divide it by the spotlight radius, which is again similar. But here we have additional parameter, which is spotlight direction. Since it's a light that's lighting towards a certain direction, we need to know which direction it is. And it's changeable by moving this arrow. In this case, I'm gonna get into blueprint implementation in a bit. After we sub like world location and spotlight location, we normalize it. Basically just making sure that the overall length is equal to 1 or minus 1, if I remember correctly. And the dot here is the same, multiplying these two vectors together. I did some experiment with exchanging vertex normal with uh, actual normal map and it actually brings some interesting results. If it's something you would like to look into, I would definitely recommend doing some experimentation here. Then we reverse it by multiplying minus 1, clamp it all, which I don't think we really need to clamp it, but I'm clamping it here for some reason, so let's keep it here. And then we end up with our spotlight angle, let's take it from cosine, multiply by minus 1 and divide our spotlight direction, again multiply by minus 1, saturate it and multiply it all together which will calculate our areas that should be lit and shouldn't be lit. Then we simply multiply it by a light color. I also multiply it here by light intensity because it's easier than setting it up manually here. The directional light too is the exact same thing. Then we can add all the lights together here, it's pretty simple, I'm just adding directional light with a point light and then on top of that adding the other directional light. It doesn't really matter at which order it is. I have it here changed a bit since I'm multiplying only with a vector from here, but I could also just connect my, ve my vector into multiplier right here. Then the important thing is we are connecting it into a LARP as a alpha. And what LARP is basically doing is taking uh, our parts of the world with multiplied lights and without multiplied lights. Our parts of the world without multiplied light is sim just a simple texture multiplied by color and light tint. Temperature is basically just to set up how dark the scene is as I showed you before. And the tint here is for later so I can adjust some player customization if he wants to set up his own lighting. It's gonna be much easier when I want to do that later. So we multiply all those three together and end up with a result, which is our world without any lights. Then together multiply it with our worlds with lights, which is our LARP B and our LARP. So our LARP 8 is world without lights and our LARP B is, light with, is a world with lights. Then we just use our light location information as a alpha. Clamp it all just to make sure that nothing goes over one. And with the last LARP, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit, we take it as our end emissive color. So let's firstly look at how our directional light is set up. We have here two of them, but this one is moving, so it's a little bit more interesting. There is really nothing complicated about that. We have some random movement up and down to set up with timeline. And then on the event kick, we am set I am setting the exact same information as I did with a single light. So in the parameter collection, spotlight location and spotlight direction. So spotlight direction is obviously taken from the arrow forward vector and the location is just simply location of the arrow. If I wanted I could for example adjust the radius and color and all these funny stuff that could be moving around. And the last LARP before ending it is alpha based on the texture. Since I'm using a synthy pack for all these I have quite a nice texture map that I can use as a mask to which part should be highlighted and shouldn't be highlighted. So it's basically just taking this mask and simply separating it between parts that are under the mask and that are not under the mask. I am then LARPing 
again between the light color that I set up as a parameter, so I can change it at any point. If I just look at my space dog master, right now light colors are all are all blue, but I could for example switch it to red. And now we got some nice red all around on everything. Well it's more of an orange, but you get my point. Then I'm taking the color, multiplying by 0.05 to get much darker variation of it and use it as my B. So my A is the full color, my B is much darker of the same color. And then the alpha switching between that is purely material based, so we are basically taking time, time sign, uh, adding one and using a variable to adjust its, uh, its speed. The other way to adjust the speed would be to just adjust the period in sign, which would be probably preferable, but I wouldn't be able to do that with a material parameter. All right, that's connected into our last LARP and, as, and into an emissive color. All right, I hope the tutorial was helpful. I'm gonna upload the project using this uh, lighting material system on GitHub, so you can just download it from there, use it for whatever you want, I don't care. And yeah, that's about it. If you wanna help me out, you can share either the tutorial or check out Super Sports, the VR game I'm working on, that would be quite helpful. So that's about it, so fancy, out.